Hi everyone, welcome to my long-awaited video of my house tour. This is the final part in the series about my HDB story, the first one being the story of how I got this HDB flat as a 24-year-old, and the second is about my renovation story. Some quick context before we begin. This is a two-room HDB flat, which means that there is only one bedroom, one living room, one kitchen, and one toilet. I'm 26 years old right now, and I'm living together with my mother in this flat. If you want more details, please watch the other two videos I just mentioned. Before we get started, just some disclaimers. I'm filming this on my iPhone because it's all I have to film on, and sometimes I'll have to use the wide-angle lens in order to show more of the space in the frame. And wide-angle lenses tend to distort the size of the space, so things might seem bigger and more spacious than they appear. So keep that in mind, and I'll do my best to represent the space as accurately as I can. I've been living in this house since 2021, so it's pretty well lived in at this point, and we're very familiar with the quirks and constraints of the space. I'll try to show you how we make this space work for us, and of course, leave any questions you have in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to answer them. As always, timestamps are in the description box below, so you can skip around if you want to. Alright, without further ado, welcome to my home. I'll give you a quick overview of the entire space and layout of the flat. It's quite a squarish layout, and I'll have the floor plan up on the screen for you to see. So when you enter through the door, there is this small foyer area where I've got my shoe cabinet and this utility cabinet that is built in with most new HDBs. Then it immediately opens into the living room. Over there is the storeroom. Next, this is the bedroom. and it's connected to the toilet here, which is also connected to the kitchen. So my toilet has two doors. Going through the toilet here, you enter the kitchen. To my right is the foyer again, and there's the rest of the kitchen. And that's it really. That is all 45 square meters of my flat, which is about 480 square feet. But keep watching if you'd like a more in-depth tour of each room because I want to show how we've made the space work for us and all the little details and thought that I've put into every inch of this space. If you love interior design or home improvement content like this, I think you'll really enjoy it, so stay tuned. So we're back in the foyer here. As you can see, I hung some of our laminate samples here and that's to cover the peephole because I realised the peephole is actually very big and you could look into my home very clearly through the peephole from the outside. One more thing about my door, if you see the gap here, I bought some door gap tape thing from Shopee and pasted it all along the bottom. This is to prevent dirt from the outside from entering which sometimes happens when there is very strong wind. I highly recommend this if you're facing the same problem and you're looking for an affordable solution. Anyway, there's the foyer light switch here, and I have a mirror for us to check ourselves before we open the door. This shoe cabinet is from Shopee, and it's a pretty cheap one, but it looks quite decent. My mother and I don't own many shoes, so this fits all our shoes really well, and there's a shoe horn hanging on the side of it. I also have a shoe rack outside for our slippers and sandals that we wear more frequently. I have these suction hooks in the kitchen doorway. This is very useful to hang our masks or reusable bags. On this wall next to the door, I have this wire rack that I bought from Daiso. It's something I saw on Pinterest and I thought it would be nice as extra storage and also to fill up this blank wall. We also have this pen holder to store markers and scissors which are things we frequently use. On the opposite wall, we have this utility cabinet. I replaced the doors on it to match the laminate of my other built-ins. The original doors were plain white and the hinges were also broken so I had to replace them anyway. Inside the utility cabinet is the circuit breaker which is fixed there, and also my Wi-Fi router and modem. 
The original shelving here was actually a lot lower and it's not fixed so when I replaced the doors my ID also helped to replace and adjust the shelf height and also added all these extra shelving below. If not, it was just this one big empty space which you cannot really do much with because the depth is pretty narrow. So with all this shelving, this cabinet actually functions as my household store cabinet where we put things like our tote bags, our first aid kit, our tools, candles and everything else that doesn't have a home anywhere else. And now we enter the living room area. I'll split it up into five main sections. This sofa chair section, the dining section, the settee, my desk, and the day bed slash regular bed. I'll go in an anti-clockwise direction starting at the sofa chair. This is from IKEA. In fact, most of my furniture is from IKEA as you'll see later. And this sofa chair thing is actually a foldable bed. So if my brother sleeps over or we have guests, they can sleep on this bed. Here is the dining corner of the living room. I have an air purifier here, which I inherited from a friend. If you've seen my renovation journey video, I mentioned this table. It's from IKEA and it's a fantastic piece of furniture, especially for our small space. It has this drop leaf table on both sides and three drawers on each side. Usually we only use one side of it, but if we shift this table to the center of the living room and open both sides, it can actually fit many people around the table, which I've done a few times when I'm hosting friends. I love how flexible this table is and when it's closed, it barely takes up much room in the corner and frees up all this floor space so the living room doesn't look too cluttered. In the drawers, I keep all kinds of tissue papers, the small pocket ones, wet tissue, tissue boxes, so this table also doubles as our tissue paper storage. As you can see, there's a huge blank white wall above the dining table, which I actually don't mind. Initially, I left it empty because I was thinking I could use it as a projector background to play movies and stuff, but I never got around to buying a projector. And now I'm just used to having it clean and empty, so we're going to leave it like that for now. On to the next section, we have this built-in settee that runs across the width of the living room under the main window. Firstly, let's talk about the window treatment. I decided on blinds instead of curtains because I think it's more convenient. It's blackout material as well, so it really blocks out all the light, but of course there's a gap between the blind and the window, so some light still does come in through the sides, but it's still very effective. For the window itself, previously there were window grills, which I removed because I didn't like the look of them, and I also don't have any pets or children in the house, so this works for us. On the window glass itself, I had a 3M UV film installed so that it blocks the ultraviolet rays and it also tints the glass a bit so that the sunlight coming in is not too glaringly bright. I only installed it last year. Before I had this installed, I had to close my blinds during the day because the heat coming in was very hot and the light was very bright and my unit is not even facing the sun directly. I wanted to find a solution, especially for the kitchen where we don't have any blinds or curtains. And I found out about the 3M window films after some googling. I do recommend it if you have the budget for it because it does make a huge difference. Firstly, it blocks UV rays which can damage surfaces and furniture over a long period of time. Secondly, it tints the window glass and blocks the glaring daylight, so it's still bright but not painfully bright. Thirdly, it blocks some heat energy so that the heat doesn't come in full force through your window during the day, which can make your entire house really hot. For all the windows in my house, which includes the living room, bedroom and the kitchen, it was $750. Singapore dollars. I'll link the company that I went with in the description below. Alright, back to the settee. During the renovation process, I was going back and forth between getting it or not, and my main concern was mostly floor space. Given that it's already a small enough space, I was worried that the settee would make the room feel smaller. And I'm really thankful that I got it in the end. I don't know about you, but I don't think it affects the visual size of the room at all. In fact, I think it makes the entire living room look more cohesive. And it's so multifunctional as well. It's seating for guests, for the dining table, and it's storage for all my stuff. At the end of the settee are some power sockets, very important and useful. When my ID and I were discussing the built-ins, we also planned out the placement of all the sockets in the house. There are four main cabinets. The first two on the right are all filled with books. Maybe someday in the future, I would love a bookshelf somewhere, but I've thought about it for a long time and I don't know what I'm willing to change in the current configuration of the space to accommodate a bookshelf. So unfortunately for now, all my books are hidden away under this settee. At the left end of the settee here is my standing fan. It looks small and like it won't be very strong, but it can be very strong. On to the next section of the living room. 
Okay, so this entire section from the fan to the desk, the bed and the storeroom is kind of like my bedroom. If you notice on the ceiling here, I have a curtain rail track that demarcates the section of the living room that I can divide with that curtain over there. This is what it looks like with the curtains closed, and I genuinely love this curtain so much, it really feels like I have my own little private space at night, and it doesn't feel like I'm sleeping on a couch in a living room, it feels like an actual bedroom. It's a great fabric, it's completely blackout, and I think the colour matches my home. It's really worth every single penny that I spent on it. I'll link the vendor for the blinds and the curtains in my description box. Oh, and as you can see, because the curtain track runs through the centre of my room, the ceiling lights have to be positioned off-centre, which means that if I have my curtains closed, there's not much light in this section, which is why I have this standing lamp between my bed and my desk. Which brings us to the next section, which is my desk area. This is where I spend most of my time in this house. I work from home 80% of the time, thankfully, so most of my weekdays and also some weekends, I'm sitting at my desk doing work of some kind. This section of the video is sponsored by Everdesk and Ergotune, who very kindly sent me this standing desk and office chair. I have the Everdesk Plus Max and the Ergotune Supreme. This setup is like a 500% upgrade from my previous desk. Firstly, I've always wanted a standing desk because I know sitting down for most of the day is not very good for your health. This is the control dial to adjust the height of the desk to your preference. You can save three preset heights on this. So number one is my sitting height and numbers two and three are my standing heights. There's also something called a health coach where you can set a timer and the desk will vibrate according to whatever time interval you set, like 30 minutes or 45 minutes, and that is to remind you to switch to standing mode or sitting mode. One of my favourite things about the Everdesk is that the parts are interchangeable, so this tabletop can be detached from the frame and these various accessories can be switched out. And this desk frame, which is the standing part of the standing desk, is actually extendable to fit different tabletop widths. So if in the future, for example, if you need a wider tabletop, you can just switch out the tabletop without needing to buy a whole new standing desk set. And Everdesk has a bunch of different accessories so you can customise your desk setup. Currently, I have this pegboard on the right and the matching hooks and pen holder. They also have their own monitor arm, but my current monitor is so old that it doesn't have the screws in the back to attach the monitor arm, which is why I don't have it set up that way. I also have this small shelf where I put my laptop when I have it connected to the monitor. In the back here, there are grooves where you can loop your cables through. Underneath the table is this little stand that is also removable if you don't need it but I find it very helpful to hold an extension cord and keep all my wires tucked away. If not, this area here will be very cluttered. A con for me is that I don't have storage with this desk. I have a monitor stand that has drawers, which is where I keep my most used items that I need accessible, and I have my skincare in a separate storage because I do my skincare at my desk. But I believe they have a hanging under desk storage on their website, which you can get if you need the storage, but I just don't have it here to show you, unfortunately. And that's my desk. They have various colours and finishes for the tabletop and also a different frame colour to suit whatever interior design you have going on. I really like the look of this wood and this frame and it matches the rest of my house. Next I have this chair which is one of my favourite desk chairs I've ever sat on. Just like the desk, it's highly customizable in terms of adjusting all these parts according to your individual needs and preferences. Of course you can adjust the height of the chair, but you can also adjust this lumbar support section to be as high or as low as you would like. You can also adjust this neck rest to be higher or lower, further front or further backwards. The armrests are also adjustable. Look at how much it can rotate or extend to whatever permutation you like. This chair comes with a guide which I find really helpful and it shows you all the various ways you can adjust the settings on your chair for whatever situation you're in. As for the materials of the chair, the seat and the backing are made of this net material that is pretty see-through, but it's actually very strong and sturdy. And if you see here, underneath the seat is just empty space. So the seat itself is just this net material, which means there's a lot of circulation under your seat and you won't get sweaty thighs when you sit for too long. This chair, in combination with the Everdesk standing desk, has really improved my posture tremendously. It's pretty expensive, so you may need to save up for a while, but if you have the budget for it and you're seriously considering a standing desk, I think this would be a good option for you to try out. Thank you again to Ergotune for sponsoring this video. Let me show you the rest of my desk area. I have a small waste paper bin. I have this carpet to prevent my chair wheels from getting dirty and dirtying my floor with it. 
And it really helps. Before I got this carpet, I was constantly mopping this section of my floor and having to clean my chair wheels. But ever since I got this carpet, I've never had to clean my chair wheels again. I also have another extension cable that I attached onto the wall, and this is where my iPhone and Apple Watch charger is plugged in. I don't have much in terms of wall decoration, just some quotes and pictures to fill up the space a bit. Next to my desk is this IKEA standing lamp, which is useful because the ceiling lights are on the other side of the curtain, so this is the light I use at night when I have my room curtains drawn. Next we have my bed, which I have given up on making it look like any kind of sofa, hence why my pillows and duvet are all just folded on it. Oh, and I have a string of fairy lights here, and the switch is hidden behind the bed, so it's easy for me to switch it off and on at night. It's a pretty cheesy roof-shaped arrangement, and that welcome home sign is also very cheesy. I cut it out of an IKEA magazine. Someday I will update the decor, maybe, but for now I'm too lazy to spruce it up. Oh, and this section of the wall behind the storeroom door and my bed is also a fake wall. You know how HDB flats tend to have recessed walls for whatever reason? So there was a huge one here and one in the bedroom, and I did not like the look of it at all, so I had a fake wall installed to even out the wall. And because this is a fake wall, I could actually choose where to place my power socket and have it flushed against the wall, compared to the power sockets near the settee which come out of the wall. So as you may notice, these sockets are all strategically placed because I already had my furniture layout in mind when my ID and I were discussing the renovation. Having this here means that I can charge my phone while lying in bed at night, and it's also conveniently where my Google Nest and my robot vacuum is parked. I got this robot vacuum secondhand from Carousel, which I really really love and it truly is indispensable for our house cleaning routine. We are now in the next room of the house, which is the bomb shelter slash storeroom, and instead of your conventional HDB storeroom, I've converted it into my walk-in closet. I always keep the door open to air the closet. There is this random chair here that I keep behind the curtain. We use this chair as an extra seat for the dining table, and at night sometimes I use it as my side table. Inside the storeroom, there is about this much walking space, which is just enough for me to open the closet doors and change in here too. On the floor, I have this basket from IKEA, which holds some of my exercise gear like a yoga mat and my workout bag. On the right wall, I also put up these clothes hooks from IKEA, which has been so useful. I usually hang clothes that I plan on wearing here again, like my jeans, loungewear, sleeping shirt. Having this really makes it seem like this is an actual closet and not just a converted storeroom and I really measured it out to make sure that the hooks are all spaced out evenly. On the left, we have this white three-door wardrobe from IKEA, which just barely fits into the storeroom. Unfortunately, the light switch is also squished in between the wall and the wardrobe, but there was nothing I could do about that. And if you look around my closet, I've also stored various things on top of the wardrobe, and also in this very narrow gap here, there is a foldable step ladder and a foldable table. So any miscellaneous items that I cannot fit inside the utility cabinet outside, I will keep on top of my wardrobe. Here is the inside of my wardrobe. In the single door section, I have my other miscellaneous items like my loungewear, exercise clothes, and bed sheets. On this top shelf are my perfumes and various backups of skincare, pouches for travel, and all that. I also have one mirror that I stuck on here. I installed this battery-operated light switch from Daiso for this section because most of my clothes in this section are black and having this light makes it easier for me to find stuff. The double doors on the left are for my going out clothes and below are more items I have in storage. I also put up this stick-on mirror from IKEA on the inside of the door. Let's move on to the bedroom which is my mother's room. It's quite a simple bedroom. On the door here, I have this clothing hook rack that I got from IKEA to hang on the door so that my mother can hang her clothes here, similar to my hook situation in the storeroom. My ID also helped to reposition the light switch that was on the wall to be on this wardrobe. Next to the light switch, I also installed the same square mirrors from IKEA to make a full-length mirror. Let's take a look at this huge built-in wardrobe with sliding doors. I considered getting a loose wardrobe unit instead, but I'm glad I went with this built-in option because it fully maximizes the space from the ceiling to the floor. My ID also let me customize the shelving in here and I could add these lock drawer units. We also store extra bed sheets, towels, and pillows in this wardrobe. In this narrow space here between the window and the wardrobe, we store our ironing board and a couple extra foldable chairs. Now for the windows, they have the same UV film treatment on the glass as the living room, and also the same blinds. As you can see, this window has double doors, and this one is a single door, and I've split the blinds to cover each section. 
which also conveniently works out for us because this section of the bedroom can also be divided with the same curtain, just like in the living room. In my original plan for the house layout, this section would be my brother's bedroom section with a desk and a chair, and this would be his bed. So if he needed some privacy, he could pull this curtain to cut the room in half while my mother and I can still access the wardrobe outside. And he would also be able to control the light coming in from this window from inside the curtain. Likewise, the ceiling light is off-center to account for the curtain rail cutting the room in half. So this desk and chair was originally mine before I got the Everdesk and Ergo Tune. Both are from IKEA and I liked it because it looks pretty and it's solid wood just like the dining table. But it is a small table which made my working space feel very cramped. But it's perfect for the bedroom and my mother was very happy to inherit it from me. She sits here a lot to watch shows on her tablet. So this is all my mother's stuff including this lamp as well. This is my mother's bed for now and the bed frame is actually a storage bed frame. So you can lift the mattress up and underneath it we have more items that we keep in storage like our big luggage, some spare pillows and blankets and various other household things. This storage bed frame was quite expensive, about $600, but I think it's really worth it for us given how valuable storage space is for our small flat. This window here above the bed is to access the aircon condenser unit outside. And that's it for the bedroom, let's go to the toilet through this door here. The heater switch is actually in the bedroom, which makes it a bit inconvenient, but I don't think the electrician could have easily changed that. I also want to point out this door. Originally the door hinge was on the right side here, but because of the layout changes we made to the toilet, my ID repositioned the door hinge to be on the left so that it can open and close nicely without hitting the towel rack or this drain part here. The toilet has a completely different vibe from the rest of the house. It's all dark and grey and stony compared to the warm wood in the rest of the house. Let me change angle so that I'm viewing it from the other side of the toilet. Firstly, I want to talk about this box up of the pipes on the ceiling. I think most toilets in the newer HDBs have this box up to hide the pipes. So what my ID did was that she painted it black to match the wall tiles and she also helped me install these light panels inside the box up to add more light to the bathroom. Which I didn't even know you could do so I'm very thankful that she did because it makes a huge difference to how the bathroom is lit up and it's so much brighter with the light panels. I installed matching towel rails over there and also above the toilet here. These accessories, the toilet roll holder and this towel hook I got from Ikea. I also have one hook over there to hang the toilet brush. In the original layout of the bathroom, the sink was actually here where my shower is and the shower head was here. So I wanted to switch it around so that I could construct a little curb here to keep the water in and therefore keeping the rest of my bathroom floor as dry as possible. I really wanted a dry bathroom where the floors are not wet most of the time because I really dislike wet floors in bathrooms. I also wanted to have this glass wall to section off the area and prevent the toilet from getting wet when we bathe. At first I was worried it'll be too small but thankfully it worked out just fine. I also installed this shower curtain to help keep the water in while we bathe. It's also from Ikea and so is this caddy inside that holds our shower products. I have this hook right next to the door. Initially I just put it here because I had an extra hook that I didn't know what to do with but it turned out to be a great decision because I hang my hair towel here where I can easily access it to put my hair up before I exit the shower so that I don't get the outside floor all wet. So there's the towel rack and over here is the sink and of course more storage everywhere. This mirror is actually a cabinet and under this sink is also a cabinet. We keep some toilet paper in here and backups of shower products. This little basket is from Ikea and it's so satisfying how perfectly it fits into this space. On top of the mirror cabinet I also have a clock and a tissue paper box. On the side here is a toothbrush and toothpaste holder. I try to have as few things on the sink counter as possible but these can't be helped because I use them every day, like the hand soap and mouthwash. There is another hook here for the hand towel to dry your hands. This is the other door of the toilet and it's neatly folded out of the way in this space. I love this bathroom door, it's the new slide and swing type of door instead of the old bifold doors. And that's it. I really love my toilet and we keep it super clean all the time. I think it's a huge upgrade from the original toilet. Moving on to the kitchen. I really love our kitchen, even though it's a lot smaller than we're used to. But at least everything is ours and we can do whatever we want and cook whatever we want. I think it's almost the perfect kitchen for us in terms of size, storage and functionality. Most of our budget for renovation went into the kitchen and bathroom because these are the most crucial areas that you don't want to scrimp on. I opted for the same flooring as the rest of the house but depending on your personal preference and how you use the kitchen, having tiles might be more durable. 
Our kitchen is generally dry most of the time and we don't cook anything that is too messy, so having this flooring works for us for now. I want to point out these hidden switches here in this cabinet, which are the switches for the hood, the oven and the counter lighting. I wasn't even thinking of getting this, but my ID includes it as part of the kitchen carpentry package and it's so useful. It's a really warm light, so it adds a certain ambience to the kitchen and it's just wonderful. Above the sink here is a dishwashing rack and my sink tap is this movable one and you can also change the spray type. At the end is my washing machine and in this narrow space we usually put our drying rack from IKEA and some more foldable chairs. The drying rack is currently in use outside so it's not here. At the back I have some suction hooks to hang our mop and feather duster. I also have these hooks here that is very useful for drying huge cookware or hanging plastic bags. Just like the toilet, I think the kitchen has undergone a huge transformation, especially if you compare it to the before pictures. And that's it for the house tour. I'm so glad to finally be able to make this video. I've been living in this space for about two years and it feels so long yet so fast. Having your own space and home feels very different and I'm so grateful that we have this for us. Of course, I'm aware that this is not the ideal situation and if we've had more resources from the beginning, I for sure would not have chosen a two-room flat for my family of three people. Even with my brother only visiting occasionally and only my mother and I living here most of the time, it's still a squeeze, but I'm very proud of what I've done with the space to make it work for us now. It's easy to be bitter about what I don't have, but I think it makes me much happier to be grateful to appreciate what I do have and to feel proud of myself for making this happen. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some ideas for your renovation or your home improvement. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one.